So, uh, so welcome everybody here. Um, I am going to pull up the agenda right now. Thank you, Matt. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Okay, uh, first of all, um, they're going through the procedure at the, at the beginning. Um, Matt Kane is on for notes, correct, minutes. Uh, I first would like to uh, 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 approve the minutes from March, April. March minutes, April minutes, approve the April minutes. <clears throat> Um, are there any questions about the April minutes? Clarifications? Uh, that was, Sanjay was the only one that was not here for that one. Correct. Um, uh, he, can, he can vote anyway then. Yes. <laughs> well, I move to accept the minutes of our April meeting. Excellent. Second. Uh, moved and seconded. Uh, moving into program reports for for uh, May. So we have to vote if we're going to move and second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Vote. All in favor. All right. Uh, minutes have been accepted. Um, moving into program reports. Uh, the three things that we have uh, uh, put on the agenda here are youth sports, aquatics, and prime time. Um, end of season expanding programming. Basically, this uh, this was introduced at the beginning of the month because we were moving into uh, 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 we are winding down for the end of the season here. Youth sports right now is uh, in sort of an of this change, and this moves into the aquatics. Also, we have picked up uh, uh, right now. We're looking at at acquiring the the recreation swimming program which is one of the biggest acquisitions since we last met, uh, uh, basically in a, in a sort of a splintered group from the Tritons group. Uh, we've picked up the recreation program. Uh, uh, we are offering a competitive program of, of youth and up to high school age. There are two different levels. We're, at, we're offering a program that has uh, swimmers from from uh, you know some of them are uh, have been involved in the Tritons before, some of them are are new to the program. But we have about 20, pro, 20 swimmers that are right now signed up for recreational swimming under our aquatics program, and we're hoping that it's the beginning of a long relationship. Uh, their their program goals are very much similar to ours in terms of getting people active and getting people to do so without the without the pressures of some of the things I think there was some frustration from the swimmers and I think certainly frustrations from the from the instructors about about what the 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 the, the process was with the with that with the private program that was also cohabitating the, the pool here. We've managed to work a schedule out and we've managed to work a, a fee structure out and we've managed to work uh, instruct, uh, basically bringing the instructors onto the rec program. So in the long time, in the long-term goals of ours of, of, 
you know, providing a larger, more robust, more more uh, thoughtfully active feeder program. This this is this fits into some of the things that we're looking at doing. It is very much a a uh, uh, sort of a, a trial basis right now, much like uh, well, much like lacrosse has been for us this year, and also Sanchez here with baseball. Uh, you know, we are we are exploring the ability to turn recreation into a not just providing programming that has these sports, but also turning it into a wholesale feeder program for the for the high schools and for the region. So, um, you know, we're hoping that obviously that all these programs work out for us. We are in the process of looking at how we're providing the services and how the how we can connect in with the high school and the high school programs also, but that is a major part of where we are right now. Um, questions on youth sports and moving into the aquatics. So, so just so I understand, so that's um, part of the Tritons program and they're gonna continue managing the more competitive no, part Tritons, of it. They have splintered off. The Tritons essentially, this is like soccer. If you're familiar with youth soccer, uh, yeah. the Tritons ran as a, as a private group. The difference is they didn't run registrations through us, but the Tritons have basically, in a nutshell, had two wings. They had a group that was that was encouraged and moved forward in the in the uh, uh, national training programs and in and uh, basically upper end. Yeah, that, so they're keeping that. They're keeping and then that. They're, that is still passing off. So they're going to train somewhere else and this is they're, group they're trains still, at the... the... The Tritons still have, uh, we still work with the Tritons in terms of space, not work with them. Yeah. The Tritons still use the same space that we work with. Uh, and yeah. they have a chance now to, in their own interest, they have a chance to uh, do uh, aggressive development the way that they feel that they, that they can. Um, uh, the other group, the recreational swimming, the part that, the part that, uh, uh, the, 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 the part that splintered off from them was looking for a home. And because okay. their values, because their direction, because their interests align with ours, they asked if we'd right. be interested. And we, and we okay. are right now trying to make that work. For the spring, fall, I mean, for the spring, summer seasons, that's where we are right now. We would like to be able to extend it into the fall, winter also. Sarah. Has there been or is there likely to be any conflict in um, <clears throat> just managing access to the pool? And if there is, is it the case that direct programs have priority over private programs? Uh, it was, we explored the, all of those overlaps in terms of, we didn't want to, we didn't want to pull kids out of our program. And we didn't want to either both in swimming and also one of the most important things that we established was that they're not, they're not uh, seeking ownership of, of participants. If we have kids that want to end up playing field hockey, or if we have kids that want to end up playing soccer, if we want to have kids that it's not a year long commitment for kids to, to not do other rec programming in terms of scheduling, it does not conflict with, with ours. It is, when I say it's situated under our aquatics, Katie Brown right now is the coordinator that it that it, uh, that, it that that is basically the supervisor of it. It is nestled underneath our aquatics program, and so it's it has to go through scheduling with us. They aren't an independent program inside of our program that is that's that's elbowing for room inside of our programming. I think that. You know, certainly in the first week or two of our operating, it's uh, we haven't run into any head-to-head uh, -head conflicts. But well, I'm not sure of, if we're talking about the same yeah, thing. I'm, in I'm, terms of scheduling, maybe we are, but yeah, but about the Tritons yes. that are continuing as Tritons. No, they've they've left. They the the individual swimmers are not with the Tritons anymore, and we're not using. We're not, and, and in terms of space in the in the pool. We have our own space. But are the yeah. Tritons using the middle school pool, or do they? Yes, they are. Yes, else? they are. And yes, is there are. any conflict about time for that? Okay, no. Thank you. Not a problem, Sanjay. Thanks, Ray. This is um, partly about swimming, but 
partly about youth sports more generally. And there are just a couple of comments that I want, I want us to be kind of aware of as an organization. Um, one thing that I've detected in my now like eight months as president of Amherst Baseball is that there is a segment of the population, parents, who use the word rec sports as a derogatory term. Yes. And you're, I'm sure, aware of this from your life in sports and basketball. Um, and I think your vocabulary of feeder programs is precise and exactly what we want to be doing. But this doesn't exactly sound like that. This sounds like the Tritons basically cut a bunch of kids. <laughs> and, now, and this is, these are my words. These are not Ray yeah. Harp's words for I the know. recording. These I know. are Sandra Arawati's words, not Ray's words. But that's what it, it sounds like to me. Or alternatively, and maybe more charitably, there are families who chose not to participate in the more expensive and higher intensity version of youth swimming that the Tritons are offering. It sounds to me, oh, go ahead. You had more. Uh, nope, that was point one, but go ahead. I'm, I'm all for conversation. Right. Interrupt it's, me and, and talk. <laughs> it sounds to me, and I, I probably have several conversations with, uh, you know, with our program or with our, with our swimming instructors that we'll get into, you know, a personal conversation about, about the whole, you know, what went, what went on with their split. Um, um, I specifically told them, I don't need to know those in details right now. My sense is that it's the second part of that, that there are people who were frustrated. There was a mutual sort of parting of ways, but there were people who were frustrated inside that program and they sought something else. Um, and, and so in terms of this merger, because our, because our ideals are, are similar and because it does fit our long-term perspective, I think that it's, I think that our, our being a landing spot there is important. The feeder program part of it at the beginning of this, I want uh, you know, the recording here and, I, and many of my conversations about long-term goals for our sports programs, that feeder program is a major piece of it. I know that there is, that, that rec has sort of a little bit of a bite in terms of the way people say, yeah, well, there is competitive sports and then there's rec sports. Rec sports is where you don't get cut and you, rec sports is where you just go and have fun and you don't care about winning. And that's not, that's not what we're thinking about here. We're thinking about finding a way to, as a service to the town and to the schools and to everything else to, to build and create a, 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 you know, a, a similar model across sports that gives people a chance to be at their best when the lights come on. Um, we want to, in, in our second year, uh, one of the goals that we've already started to talk about that Jose and I have talked about, Jose Allen and I have talked about, is making, uh, basically starting to look at ways to not just offer programming, but to also think about doing things like, like uh, 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 you know, building a, an academic model for students about doing things like mental health, uh, have, having mental health programs inside that we start introducing kids to ideas of diet and mental health sort of issues that, that at younger ages might, might help them become better athletes in the future. Building a program that doesn't just collect money and registration and put them in jerseys, but also starts looking at what it means to be a competitive athlete. And so our vision for the program is to eventually be more than just the pejorative rec sports is to be something that has people think I can get something out of this that is productive and wholesale uh, as opposed to just being consumers. Thanks. And so this, the second comment I wanted to make is more related to finances and uh, my, again, just my opinion. But if we have a private youth sports organization, and again, I'm not speaking specifically about the Amherst Tritons, I'm speaking generally about youth sports, even though it's swimming that has brought this to the table. If we have a youth sports organization that is not meeting the needs of all members of the community um, and is perhaps specifically not meeting the needs of members of the community with fewer financial resources or less, and I'll put this in air quotes, commitment, right, then I would argue that Amherst Rec and the town should impose a greater financial burden on that organization and the, the families and participants that have remained with it, you know, to 
to maybe be more quantitative, yes. the Tritons should cover the costs of the rec program that you are now running for them. Uh, and again, I'm using the Tritons only as an example because that's the sport subject sport on the table right now. But I mean that comment with regard to all youth sports. And again, that's just my personal view of the situation. Where does that in conversation here, where does that align with baseball in particular? We can we can have that offline also, but how does that how does that overlap with the baseball discussion? Well, so my I'll be very brief because I don't want to get too parochial here. My answer to that would be that the baseball program that we're running well did not make cuts and is welcoming with full financial aid supported by the private organization is welcoming any child in the age eligible range that wants to participate in the sport. Okay. Um, I mean, we're, we're in the process. This is gonna be, uh, does this come up here? Um, maybe it does for me. Uh, it does, we're talking about doing some registration. we're taking over registration, which will have us involved with, with uh, facilities and doing field registrations. Um, but that doesn't take care of the pools that, that like, we, we're intentionally not assuming the responsibility of scheduling the indoor facilities. Um, and scheduling is a major part of that picking up the cost that I think you're referring to there, Sanjay. Yeah, I think yeah, and you know, whatever, again, pool, uh, whatever pool time costs. Yes. Yeah, I, I think maybe more concisely and broadly, my my we're an advisory commission, right? So mm -hmm. my advice <laughs> mm -hmm. is that Amherst Rec should not be taking on an additional financial burden, thereby freeing a private nonprofit, but private organization from you. a financial burden that they would otherwise be carrying. I think that maybe that's the way I should be expressing. I it. hear you. That's, that's an angle that I haven't, it's been a, it's been a really quick process to get this started because the season was right upon us. So uh, that actually is an angle I hadn't really been thinking about, and I will take that under uh, advisement as we move forward. I might. I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, if yeah. the Tritons just decided, you know what, we're not. Go we're only going to offer the competitive, the most competitive. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Goodbye, everybody else. We might start you know, increase the, the swim program under the rec umbrella because we want to serve those kids and we wouldn't somehow feel it was, would we, that it was the Triton's responsibility to. I think, I think the question is, uh, was it, are the Tritons making, were the Tritons losing money on that program? And is that the reason they gave it away? Uh, that's not clear, yeah, that but that's a possibility, but that's not necessarily the reason. How, how I think that when I say a, a splintering in the Tritons, it's not my business. I don't, I don't purport yeah. to, to know. I don't, I know a very limited angle in terms of, I've talked more to consumers about it than I have about our own people who are coming over to us now from them. But, uh, but, but you know, at their mission I, th I think they had a, an identity moment, a moment where they had to figure out what they were trying to do, what their mission was, how they're going to serve that. Um, uh, I don't know that they're, uh, you know, when, when I say that, that, that Sanjay's point, I, 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 I would like to uh, sort of follow up with that. I, I, uh, I don't know what the nature of the Triton's relationship with the town is and should be. And if and if they if they owe something to us, I, I'm not. That hasn't even been a part of my conversation uh, in finding a way to 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 uh, to to provide what I think we should be able to provide here for the people who are not satisfied with this private organization. Um, I think that I, I think that if it turns out that that there's something that we should be doing more, I think I, I would be interested in doing that. Um, I, I figured youth sports would be the biggest part of that, of that, uh, of that uh, program report piece because of the swimming, the rec swimming program. 
Um, are there any other questions about that? I, you certainly can reach out to me if you have any uh, or, or observations that you would like to share. Um, uh, the rest of the sports programs right now, particularly lacrosse is the one that we have had the most uh, numbers in across boys and girls. I am coaching girls uh, third and fourth grade now officially, <laughs> um, which is had which is kind of taken a bunch of my time out of, out of the schedule. I, I've been waiting in the wings this whole time and I'm happy to be doing it because it's a whole lot of fun. Um, and I'm joking with Jose that, I, that, that he's my boss now because I, he hired me as a coach. Um, I, in third and fourth grade, we, I think, I think the, the, it's been pretty positive. We had, I think I mentioned to the last commission meeting that we had UMass's uh, women's program that was uh, stepping into coach. Well, they're really, really good. And they got caught in their, in their postseason run and they had to step back. So I was more than happy to step in and coach a little bit. We have two games under our belt. We're wrapping that up. The boys are coming towards their conclusion here at the end of their school year also. Um, many mites have been going. Um, let me ask Sanjay if there are any updates on baseball. Yeah, very quickly, we, ha we continue to have 13 Amherst Public School students participating. 11 of those are at the middle school. We have one sixth grader and one ninth grader um, because of age, sort of age bands, not agreeing with school age bands. Um, and then we have one Hadley child and one uh, Northampton child. And uh, they're having a great season. They're three and one or four, four and one, I think. Um, and all indications are that it's a smashing success and that rumors of baseball's demise have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> the, the last question on sports I need to ask, and Sanjay, you'll be, I, I will be speaking to you directly about this, but anybody that has any sense of, of advice or direction to be thinking about it for us, because this is another thing that Jose has been bringing to my attention is what should the relationship be with, with between our rec department and middle school age kids, kids at the regional middles at the, at the middle school. Um, uh, should their relationship be with us or should we be pushing, should we be, be pushing them and pushing the school department into, into assuming those for the school district, um, for the regional school district? That's been sort of an existential question that we, at the end of the season, we've been looking at Sanjay and baseball are right in the middle of it. Our boys lacrosse program, which is a middle, which are middle schoolers, are also right in the middle of that. So um, uh, the question is whether or not we should be we should be in our feeder in our looks to do feeder programs. Should we be doing that work for the middle schools if they have that connection to that, to the to the regional school already? Um, like I like having more programs, but again, if it's if it's assuming a cost and we can't provide the same services that they would be able to get under the schools, then the question is, should we be beefing up our ability to, to give middle school baseball more, or should we be trying to um, encourage the school district, the school department to pick that up and, and make that theirs? Carolyn. Carolyn. Um. <clears throat> I kind of feel like part of our mission is to catch everyone who's falling through the other cracks. I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like it might mean, this all might mean that we need to communicate better with the programs themselves, maybe with the families and find out where there are gaps um, and be there for them. Because if we end up being a recreation department that's excluding kids even without knowing it, then we're not really doing our job. I want more. I also don't want to end up being well. Rec, it's it's rec can take care of that because we don't want sure. to. Sure. I, I want as many opportunities to to uh, educate and provide opportunities. I want as many of those opportunities as I can. I also don't want to spend all of our resources uh, in a thousand different directions if we don't have to. Is, is there some communication piece here though that we're missing with the organizations? 
with the organizations, meaning the 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 high school teams as right. leaders, I, all I the think, other programs. Yeah, um, I think I think we should be uh, we should be more connected with those programs, certainly. Um, and and that's I think probably step one of of our a, attempts to build is like. I don't know what to call it, a feeder program, capital F, capital P, of building a, a rec department feeder program. I think that's number one is to involve and, and bring in those high school programs and the, and the uh, high school athletic department, uh, athletic director and the athletic staff over there. I think that's one of the main things that we have to do in, in terms of finding need. Sanjay? I think Frisbee oh, has always worked really well yes. in that way. So. Using frisbee, that as a model. frisbee and maybe especially volleyball i think volleyball has done a really nice job also in sort of building a, a program underneath that we've done a bunch of those two programs have both mm -hmm. they've done clinics through us they've done they've they've done registration for programs through us and and their coaches have worked closely with our with our with our staff and in, in a bunch of different ways i think those are uh, frisbee is a i think a fair model for us i so i do think you're right carolyn and ray that that the conversation has to happen with the public school athletic director and the principals and the superintendent right because i think the public schools need to need to be more clear about what their intentions are regarding middle school athletics it it i think it seems very haphazard at this point and again, I'm not speaking solely about, I mean, I'm interested in yeah. baseball, right? Yeah. But it's not just baseball, it's Nordic skiing, it's mm -hmm. even volleyball, it's soccer, you know, th there are many sports um, for which the, um, the treatment seems haphazard. From yeah, I'm, the, looking, I'm looking at the spring registration information, you know, and it, at the schools and they offer girls lacrosse starting at grade seven, but boys only at grade nine. You know, boys, oh. same thing for tennis. Girls tennis starts in grade seven. So I can, I can say, I don't know what it is for tennis, but for lacrosse, I know that they were, that we originally were uh, with, we had the idea of offering girls at seventh grade uh, with us, but the high school, because of numbers, the high school had to pull all seventh and eighth graders up to the high school to play JV, to field the JV team. Oh. So, so in terms of number, that's the reason why they don't offer seventh, eighth grade girls lacrosse. Um, so that might be different next year. I mean, it's like they'll ideally, take they'll take it if they want need it. But <laughs> at some point, my little army of fourth graders are going to be seventh graders, and right. <laughs> and they'll be. They will be uh, robust. They will be they will, they will be numerous. Ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, I, I think I think the middle school sports programs is very much not really that much of a focus. Like there's certain things that they do, and then there's other things they don't, and it's just based on what they need and what coaches they have that have stepped up to that. Um, and I don't know that they put a whole lot of effort into filling the slate of middle school sports. No, that's true, Matt. And, it, and again, my examples come from my own experience, right? But I can say that, I, if, if, you know. You can go down the list and, and we just did go down yeah. part of the list and it's just, it's just random. It's, it's random. And in fact, in, in, in a sport with which I'm familiar, an offer was made to the school district to provide a roster and coaching if the schools would support a middle school team in that sport. And the answer was no. Yeah. I, so I know. again, to, to put aside my parochial interests for a moment, you know, Ray, you're, you use the word more. That is the critical word, right? We want, we want as a town, as a school district, as a rec department to providing, to be providing more opportunities for athletic participation. Um, the thing, that I would hope we could do is if some sports wind up under the public schools and some wind up under rec is that rec can try to provide an equivalent access, right? So from my experience, effectively running a middle school program this year, right? The things that we as a private organization cannot provide, 
are timing and transportation. We That's cannot, what we're hearing with, you know, with We cannot offer practices too. immediately after school because we rely on volunteer coaches and we cannot provide transportation or we choose not to make the substantial financial investment in providing transportation, right? And that's what the schools have to do. And in fact, the schools have, you know, acknowledged that effectively we're running their program and it would cost them a lot more to run the program. Right. Um, so if REC is going to be trying to run feeder, if we want it to be an open and accessible set of programs across all sports, across all three seasons, those two questions of timing and transportation are absolutely critical. We're hearing similar things with boys lacrosse, who of course is under us this, this season. Boys lacrosse at the middle school level, they're, they're coming to us is different than you're coming to us with baseball in that they were with the schools last year. And so they had the school umbrella last year which had, an I think the other piece that's attached to that, in addition to the two factors that you mentioned, is also field care, is also they have DPW, DPW is contracted to, to uh, 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 maintain their fields, whereas with us, we maintain the fields, and that's a notable difference for them to move from the school's umbrella to our umbrella. Uh, and so two different approaches, baseball and lacrosse that we've picked up this year and how that works into, into like what you all get in that process, what you all are provided, the, the resources you have, transportation of course is mutual across the two. Um, we, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a similar sort of question that we have to ask about, okay, if we're providing those opportunities for the middle school kids, is there something that the schools, uh, are we doing the schools a service that, 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 that means something more than us just filling those cracks, uh, us, us providing uh, opportunities for kids who, are, who don't have the, the opportunities provided for them? Yeah, but I think there's, there's another factor, which is also like in high school sports, you know, there's established sports leagues in each sport. It's pretty consistent across sports. But when you get to middle school sports, like, um, for example, there's a middle school track and field team. But there's not that many middle schools that have a track and field team. Right. And I don't know, the, 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 bas the baseball team, what teams are they playing against? Are they playing against school teams or are they playing against club teams? The team that we're operating? Yeah. So we're playing in a non-school-based league. Um, right. But for example, Frontier has a middle school team. Okay. And they're only 15 minutes away. So I don't I haven't researched their So you feel you plan. feel it doesn't even if even if they're not playing in a school based team, it's fine if they were a middle school team could just play in that. Because in, in, in soccer, I don't think I don't know that there's middle school soccer leagues. There's little more like club leagues in middle school age kids. Yep. I personally, and again, not just about baseball, right? But about middle school yeah. sports in general. I don't really care if it's a school-based team or a recreation department-based team. As long as right. the money, timing, and transportation are substantially equivalent, right? And as long as they have somebody to play. Um, yeah, right. So... Okay. For our baseball league this year, we were able to find people to play, find teams to play through a non-school-based league. It's run, actually, all of the teams we play are actually run through rec departments in other towns. We're sort of like 20% run through the rec department for this year. <laughs> right. Um, but there's at least one example of a local high school or local middle school that is able to find competition mm. at the middle school level. But I mean, I haven't done extensive research to know how much availability there is in terms of school-based. My sense is that a lot of middle school, there, there aren't a lot of middle school uh, teams, teams that play for the middle schools across the, the different, at least the field sports, the ball sports, field sports. 
um, uh, my sense is that a lot of them are run through through rec departments, through town rec departments. Um, Amherst is a little bit unique because the high school athletic department is also the athletic department for the middle school. So it, it technically is the regional school district's uh, athletic program. Some of the questions that we're asking and some of the questions that maybe we're, we're preparing to ask, you know, the answers may come maybe maybe straightforward and reasonable. I, I, I haven't had the conversation with Victoria. I haven't had the conversation with Mike Morris. I haven't had, we are starting to talk about doing cooperation. Uh, you know, the three of us have, have sat down to talk about doing some cooperative uh, youth sports building initiatives to, to start doing some tours and seeing how schools combine, how school dishes combine <laughs> recreational and school department sports. So. I know that they've been asking the same questions. They've been they've been asking the same direction as the same questions, but as we as we ask more, <laughs> sorry. As we ask more of those questions, and we're, you know, I think they've they, they've presented themselves to be pretty strong partners for us. I think we can we can uh, you know I, the, my my hope is that we're moving in the direction of of cooperation. And I don't know if cooperation has been the best word to describe how we've been operating for a little while. Um, I just realized I'm wearing a Northampton soccer shirt in my travel. I apologize to you and everybody who's watching at home. <laughs> Where's that um, hat? Where's that hat I gave you? I, Ray? I, I'm Come telling on, you, man. I, I am wearing. I'm wearing maroon underneath. This is this is uh, this is. <laughs> This is my new life here. <laughs> um, so, I thought there would have been more of that here. Uh, so, if there are no questions, if there are no other questions, be happy to spend more time on the jock stuff. That's uh, <laughs> that's that's fun for me. Uh, if there are no other questions about youth sports, I can tell you that uh, aquatics. Uh, the the and Carolyn, I know you had re reached out about the schedule. We are are vastly underpaid, underserved. Uh, aquatics director Katie Brown has has just finished her school stuff in the last couple of weeks. And that's why we, I mean, one of the big reasons why we haven't had that schedule up is because we've been trying to double, double check those, but the aquatic schedule should be up online. If it's, I, I think that the plan was to have it up on Friday. Yeah, I saw it today. Good, excellent. Um, got it. And so, and so in terms of lessons, in terms of, uh, in terms of open swim schedules on and and the opening of the outdoor pools that should be up splash pads were just open this weekend but there's a little bit of a problem at Groff park uh and so we're it's gonna be shut down for another week um but dpw actually reached out to me on thursday and said it's gonna be hot this weekend and we're we should be ready to open the splash pads so let's get those get those up and running um uh I don't know because it's been a while since we met, but I, I don't know if we had the, the uh, if I mentioned to you all the, the collaboration with the Senior Center. Um, we are right now working on the details of it, but we have a cooperative uh, event planned with the Senior Center, which is Movies by the Poolside poolside movies. We're going to try and show Jaws and we're going to try and show Cocoon, uh, uh, which I'm really, really excited about. But um, we're, we're going to, the original plan was to try and get War Memorial because of there are a bunch of different reasons. Number one, because it has Wi-Fi and we have a Wi-Fi, uh, we have a, we have a, a internet a projector, an internet-based projector that we thought would have to work there, but I think we're going to try and get it at, we're going to at least explore the opportunity to bring it out to mill. Facilities are better out there uh, to run it, but we're going to, you know, basically invite 
invite people to come out and watch a movie, sit pool. So I'm going to try and illuminate the pool so that we can we'll have lifeguards on duty and just people can basically watch it from the pool. Um, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty. Uh, I don't know which if if Haley or myself are. I don't know who's the most excited about offering this to our constituents, but this is a, this is a pretty fun uh, venture here. Will Sarah. people be able to bring their floating yes. you know, chairs and yes. scoops and we you know, about, I have to be treading water for We might even put like little shark fins on, yes. on like, on like, re, like, like refreshment trays and send them around the pool if we want, if we can. We, we're thinking about, it's not, it's, it's not a, uh, yeah, it's not a, 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 a charge event, but if we want to, uh, if, if we want to try and reserve spaces on the pool, we might end up trying to do that. Um, um, again, we'll have, we will have uh, lifeguards on duty. We'll have, like, you know, there's more space at the mill pool to uh, sort of have people be able to get up and move around on the outside if they want to. Um, it has to be after dark, right, Ray? Yes. Yes. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> yes, it will have to be after dark. It, I would, I would, I would also have fun if we couldn't do it after dark. But yes, it's gonna be after dark. It's definitely gonna be after dark. Uh, if it's at, if it happens at war, the plan is to have the, the uh, inflatable screen on the basketball court and looking down on the pool. Hmm. Uh, either spot we'd like to try and set it up so that if people wanted to basically uh, you, know, you know pull up and sit in their cars and watch it from outside uh, from outside the gate they could we want to try and make it so people can wow. basically do an old old school drive-in yeah um, but but we we still have to do some test runs of it and that would be in the summer months I believe it's right towards the end of summer camp um, I know because Nikki's the one that's helping us out with the with putting together the the, the projection, and it's happening right at the end of her her camp her camp time. Um, so, uh, uh, sports acquires prime time. Uh, that I guess that was my link in for aquatics. I was thinking of it. When I was thinking about aquatic stuff because I'm I'm thinking about opening the pools. So uh, lastly, and okay, we're 7.55, that's fair. Uh, project updates, uh, uh, I attached in collaborative projects on your, on your uh, uh, this was my meeting with Paul Bachelman uh, uh, earlier, basically looking at what we're doing at the end of this fiscal year. Um, the three projects, I can share screen, I think here, and I won't, I know I won't have to do a lot with any of this. Can I share this? Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me share. Desktop. It's not letting me share. I have the button. Okay, you. But but I don't think I have the document or whatever. Don't you, do you not have the green share screen button? I'm looking for it. I just don't have, I do have the share screen button, but, but it's not, let me see, desktop. For, No, I don't want that. Cancel. It didn't come on, did it? No. Do you uh, want no. me to see? Do you want me to see if I can share? Yes, please. Oops. Oh, hold on. Share screen. Oh, disabled participants can't do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, uh, I've already talked about the feeder programs. There are three. There are three categories that were printed on here. One is rec manual. One is feeder programs. One is field scheduling. 
rec manual is not irrelevant for us, but that is, that's us working with, uh, collaborating with finance, the finance department to sort of build a manual that allows us in recreation to know our operations, to be able to know and present our operations, which is something that we didn't have. A lot of our stress over the course of the, of this year so far has been the fact that we've been trying to basically build the plane as we fly it. Um, uh, we've, we, you know, with new people all over the place, we have different components of our, of our uh, 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 financial operations that are sitting down with finance to basically put in writing what, what we do. A lot of it's been point of sale up to this point. A lot of it has been, has been uh, expectations of our staff, expectations of, of, of our program directors. That's been the sort of things that we've been trying to spell out for. Uh, you know, in case in case we have to go through another couple major transitions here in the next few months, which I don't think we will, because I love my job and my staff loves their work, so we're all going to be around here. Um, but the rec manual is one. Feeder programs I just mentioned. I don't need to spend more time with that. But feeder programs is basically as it's our long term service vision. Uh, we're looking at. We're looking at the opportunity to build a feeder program and to think about what a feeder program, capital F, capital P, should look like for the school. And so we're uh, early stage of collaboration with the schools. Like I said, I've I've spoken to Mike Morris and Victoria Stewart about about uh, the first steps in in that exploration. Last piece, which I mentioned before, is field scheduling. We're in a conversational stage of collaboration with the schools and facilities about recreation taking over scheduling for the fields. Um, uh, you know, there's been a load of confusion in the past about, about uh, who has priority access and the hierarchy of that access. There's been a load of, of issues and confusion about whose responsibility it is to do things as simple as take out the trash. Who's, who's responsible for mowing, who's responsible for grooming. Like DPW has been trampled by the, by the various uh, our, uh, expectations of all the departments that they serve. Um, and so one of the things that we're looking to try and, try and do is we're trying to build a scheduling model that allows recreation to do that and to, and to pick up that burden moving forward. Facilities, I don't think, uh, you know they they have a ton of things that they have to do also i think i think that maintaining the number of times that we've sent people maybe even some of you all i'm thinking about sanjay in particular but the number of times that we've sent people from our offices to facilities and they've come back to us and said no they said that we should talk to you is uh it's an unfortunate part of being in a bureaucracy that has so many different uh masters um, and so this is one way for us to try and serve the public, serve our departments, and certainly serve the, the uh, people who use our programs. Um, um, and, it, and it loops over in the future. Ideally, it loops over as we start talking about the track project at the high school, because that would also be something that, that allows us to uh, uh, you know, have, have, have a role in that process. And to make that more efficient, because we don't want to have that process come in, and then, and then to to again be looking at three or four different offices where you have to go to try and find out how to make something work. Sarah, do you mean that the vision is that rec schedules, schedules. even schools' fields, the schedules. schools' own fields? All public fields is is all fields where we do programming, where where there's cooperative programming, basically, not necessarily for the schools fields. If there's no, if if we don't have any use for it, uh, if if there's nothing that we do with it, then we don't need to. Uh, uh, I don't know that they would want to yield that to to us as an outside group. Oh, especially we, the regional schools. The regional, the regional. That would mean that would mean involving people that are much bigger than the town right, here. But the, for track, the town, the track, the that track. Whole, yeah. That, I have that. Um, when I say I that, think, go ahead, Matt. I, I I don't know that there's there's any single thing that is only used by the schools and no one else. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is. But um, you, I mean, if it's one system, 
if the idea is one system and then the uh -huh. schools have privileged access to that, especially for these certain uh, facilities. I, I don't know what what space it would be that, that, that we wouldn't touch. When I say the track, because the track is a regional, it's a regional project. I've, I've mentioned one of my support letters and as I've mentioned in a bunch of our public meetings is that our recreation department would be willing to take on that responsibility uh, of scheduling that field, knowing the hierarchy. Um, um, and so that doesn't automatically come with our, our scheduling town fields. Town fields, for example, the, the very basic, the, the place where we need to clean, that we have a priority of cleaning up are those fields that potentially the school department bumps us from that we have access to. Uh, there, there's, uh, again, Sanjay's in the room and, and, and with baseballs, with, with our moving into that, that cooperative uh, um, um, uh, and moving into and taking baseball under recreation, there are all sorts of different overlaps there where the field that, uh, um, you know, we had, to, we had to iron out a bunch of those different pieces. We're using school fields, we have rec programming. Yeah. And so having one program there, having one. Right, program. I'm sure there's, there's plenty of organizations, baseball, soccer, swimming programs that are using school facilities and town facilities. And so and, that would and it'd be... be much better if there was one system for all of those and they don't have to separately deal with right. one system for the school facilities and a different system for the town facilities. Yeah, so I would just I would uh, uh, support that if there's some if there's going to be some consolidation of scheduling it should be all uh, be ambitious. Yes. Okay. Be very very ambitious. And then okay. And then if you have to give the schools the priority right. access to that for their facilities. Yeah. Yeah. This then doesn't then happen. that's part of it. This doesn't happen unless we are able to. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't happen unless we're able to acknowledge what that hierarchy is for school fields. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a varsity uh, coach. I, I know how, how, you know, varsity access to, to school, to school uh, uh, facilities. I know how that, how that should be. And I, it's not our intention to ever uh, sort of supersede that piece of it, but, but, you know, and having that hierarchy and maintain that hierarchy in one place where we don't have to ask, it also helps. I think it helps our, our serving those with DPW and understanding school department or DPW who you know, have a schedule of, of, of events that are happening. Their DPW, DPW's biggest complaint uh, has been over scheduling has been the fact that, that, that there's not one central site for games where they can find out okay, when do we mow these fields? Because schools use them, rec uses them. There's, you know, we rent them out to the public. Well, who, when do we, when, when can we get over there and treat the fields? Um, and so having one site will also allow departments that serve the fields that, that gives them a, a chance to, to uh, better serve the public in doing so. Um, and so that's a conversational stage right now. I've had a conversation with facilities about that and it's been a conversation about it and they seem open to the idea of, of moving that to a central site that helps everybody. It would not include, like I said, it would not include the swim pools and the gyms. Um, uh, that's, uh, you know, maybe if I, as Sanjay says, if maybe if I, if I turn ambition into the, into the, the, the you know the, the drum major here for us maybe I say I want to take I want to take the auditorium and I want to take <laughs> the, the, I, 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 I was just speaking of outdoor yeah. facilities yeah I, I think and, that indoor facilities are the the possibility of some of two groups showing up at a pool both thinking they have it seems much slimmer agreed. than the possibility of two groups of people showing up to a lacrosse field. I think the soccer. possibility of two yeah. groups showing up to the basketball court thinking they both have it is pretty high. Wow. Well, and there are those That's indoor true. spaces. But, <laughs> but that was entirely scheduled by the school district. Oh, oh, I got, I just got the reference. I see, okay. <laughs> so well, that was centralized. And that, that, that isn't the only time though. 
No, I, I know, Matt. I know. I just, I just got that reference. Well, I would point out that, of course, those spaces are used for many things other than mm -hmm. athletics also. And I don't know, the rec department would have to get deeply involved in the life of the school, you know, to know when they have assemblies and performances. I'm, I am not opposed to getting involved in the life of the school. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that other people don't have editor access. Right. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. The 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 one place the nexus of our life is when uh, there's rain and and tennis comes inside, or when or when there's rain outs and fields have to be have to be rescheduled and that sort of thing. That's where. That's where it gets dicey. If it's just a spreadsheet that I can release on, on the beginning of the season, then that's that would be different than if there aren't moving targets as you move along. And so it is a little bit of labor. It is something that I've already talked to my staff about, about where it gets housed in, in recreation if and when that happens. But I think that's, uh, I, I think that, that uh, and it is something that I think we need to have happen. So, Ray, I'll, I'll reiterate something from earlier that, you know, be, be ambitious, but be careful. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're talking about over the course of the last hour and 10 minutes, REC taking on quite a bit of new responsibility. Um, where's, the, where's the money coming from to support that additional burden, right? Correct. And so with programs you at least have registration fees. But if you're gonna take on the administrative burden of scheduling all of the fields in town, it would be a great contribution to the functioning of the town. Don't get me wrong about that, right? But you should be prepared with, our, with my, and I would hope with the commission's support, you should be prepared, prepared to stand up to town hall and insist that you be provided resources in order to enable that administrative action. Noting for myself with exclamation points, I appreciate it. Yes, I, 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 I hear you, and that's well. That, that's I think that's well reasoned. Um, I, 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 when I say uh, we're we're already working through the rec manual, that's collaboration is underway. Early stage of collaboration with the foods with the schools for the feeder programs, and of course, conversational stage here. I won't be committing to anything unless I know that we have the, uh, unless I won't overburden my staff with, with something like this without knowing that that's taking them at least partially away from some of the things that we're already burdening them with in our department. Um, and so there, there will be some things that we ask for in that process. Uh, I would not pick up this many things without, I, like I didn't, we didn't ask our staff to do the aquatics uh, when we bring, in, bring the, rec swimming we didn't ask our staff to to add to their burden we brought instructors in and put them into our into our operations i would not make those those moves if it if it meant increasing the burden on my staff and then the operational resources what you're talking about i think that 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 is in that conversation someplace i think and sorry, right? I mean, just presumably, and again, I'm pretty new to the commission, right? Uh, and it's a, it's still a little bit strange with you acting as kind of de facto chair of the commission. But presumably, this commission can draft a letter, right, that explains that as an advisory commission, we endorse Amherst Rec taking on their responsibility, but at the same time, we recommend that the town through its budgetary process, right? And through the finance committee allocate resources that are needed to accomplish that goal. We have no like power, <laughs> but it's a letter, right? You, right. <laughs> uh, you have, uh, uh, Sarah's hands up and I'm gonna go there that first. Uh, I'm gonna go there next, but I do wanna say that that does lead to my, my closing remarks here today. That does sort of get into what I wanted to put on the table for you guys. Uh, leading into our, uh, what, June meeting. Sarah? I was just going to note that we can have the minutes reflect, you know, the sense of the commission, or we could take a, a, a formal vote to say that this is how we feel. 
you know, since we're already due minutes, then yes. yeah, that's all. Is that a motion? No, I'm just okay. saying we could, I mean, I'll yeah. accept well, spending. Well, I, I think right now, right now it's a discussion phase. We don't know what resources are required yet. Right, but I think Sarah, what you're getting at is that there are multiple ways in which we could make the opinion the of the committee of the more formally known, yes. right? And whether it would be unanimous or divided or whatever, but there are ways that we can actually enter into a public record, the, a recommendation or a piece of advice from the commission. Heard, understood. Um, the, uh, uh, we're over the time that I had intended to be out of here. Uh, the the commission the 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 agenda includes track and field renovation, which I don't have new information other than the fact that it was cleared by the by the I believe it's been officially cleared by the by the five town by the four towns. Um, but I know that the town of Amherst passed the passed the resolution to do the track and field to to except the track and field record. Oh, wait, Sarah, go. <laughs> Town Council had to had to take an action, had to authorize, I don't know, had to authorize something simply so this exploration could move forward. The town has not committed any money. Correct. Okay, but the track people are going to, or the regionals, school folks Demon demonstrating coming back to CPAC next in two weeks with a revised proposal Fund fundraising and, then, and, and then we will you know and they'll be asking again okay I, I think for the same amount but I don't know because I haven't seen okay. it um and that they env they envision CPA funds from all the towns being part of the part of the plan understood and separate fundraising as well, I think. Significant fundraising. The, I, I believe, tell me where where I'm wrong on this, but but part of the place where they are here is that the 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 group that's proposing this has to come up with a with a detail like where we are for the fundraising it has to has to raise a certain amount of the money by a certain date in order for the town to commit financing to it. Is well, it's not the proponents. <laughs> it's the it's this regional school administration that is proposing the project. But yes. part of their plan is that the Hurricane Boosters volunteer group will take on this big fundraising okay. effort. And I've been told, I mean, this is third hand to me or fourth hand that that they're on board with that. But but not until the CPAs have made a decision you know they're not going to start raising money if these other pieces are not in place but the goal is to i guess decide next january about whether there is enough money to enable the the rotation of the field no correct <laughs> that was part of the big plan that's the big expensive plan or there isn't enough and it'll just be re, re constructed where it is now. Um, and so I wait, I don't have a, I don't have an official role in that. My department doesn't have an official role inside of that process right now. Um, but of course it affects our lives moving forward. Um, we're also exploring, you guys had a chance to look at the fitness court uh, information I sent you. The fitness court is Right now, we're in the, we're still technically, we, we've been approved of the grant to, uh, uh, they, they've approved us of the grant basically to, to apply to, to pull this in. We have to come up with a substantial amount of, of the fundraising here and pick a site. Uh, we, we've given them a couple of sites that, that are operational. One of them is, is uh, on, the, on the triangle at the end of the war. Uh, at the street, heading out onto Mattoon Street, uh, and moving out of the high school past the track, it's off on the left, that triangle moving out into the field, which is basically a very public space for this fitness court. 
we've looked at a couple of other sites also, and we're still very much in the process of, of asking the questions about where and if this is going to fit. Um, but I just, I mean, it's a, it, I think it's a fantastic uh, uh, proposal. It's a, it's a fantastic idea at the very least. Um, Can you say, Ray, what the other sites are? Um, we looked at Graf. We've looked at uh, uh, Graf and perhaps Mill, but we're still like, I have the the accelerating conversations come up this week about pickleball. Um, um, uh, I just right before leaving town on Friday, I went over and did a walkthrough with the pickleball group over at Hampshire College. Over at Hampshire College, so I had a chance to look at that. And so there are a bunch of projects. The reason why I think I think that I'm saying when and 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 if here right now is because is because there are a bunch of products that we're looking at here and we want to make sure that we don't get we don't get ourselves spent in a bunch of different places that make each of them a little bit less feasible but but it's uh go ahead Sanjay. Give, given the success of the kendrick park playground does kendrick park ever come up as a site for the adult kendrick, playground we talked about <laughs> we talked about kendrick park uh um uh, Kendrick Park was one of the places that we talked about. I don't remember if it was one of the three we submitted. Kendrick Park, I, I think the space, uh, we're trying to find a, a space on that, on that uh, yeah. uh, island that it would work. Um, um, if there is an interest in moving that up into the list, I'm going to be talking with planning this week about potential sites. So I'll at least... Uh, uh, at least focus on that and and find out if it's feasible for us and them. Yeah. There is a, there was a design for the whole park done about ten or eleven years ago. Uh -huh. I don't know how wedded people are to it. Or we looked at uh, we looked at up the like the basketball courts over at War. We looked at in that space, but the but the collision with Westford and, Sam, Westford and Samson, the, the renovation product of War Memorial Pool, that might make that a, a little bit more difficult to come by. But, but we looked, we, we did a walk through to take a look at the War Memorial site to see if it would make sense right there next to the pool. Well, there's a playground behind, or well, there's a space be like south of the War Memorial Pool. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I mean, personally, I would urge caution regarding War Memorial. It is, it is not, I think, it is easy to think of it as a magnet site because of the pool, but the reality is that the pool is only open for six weeks a year or something right. of roughly that duration. And the rest of the time, it is, not, it is not a particularly appealing location, frankly. Parking is difficult, especially during the school day. Park Parking is the was one thing that we we came across in our walkthrough that we said it was going to be an issue. Yeah, um, hmm. and yeah, I mean, I like downtown. I think that you know, I have friends who thought that the playground would be a disaster, that no one would ever go to the playground, and they were wrong. Okay. <laughs> 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 one town has reached out to me uh, last week, uh, uh, reached out to me and said they loved what happened, loved the playground at Groff and wants to know about our process of making that happen. And I said, I said, I, I, I love that playground, the spray pad and everything that's over there. I, 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 I loved it the first time I walked through there. I said, you also want to take a look at Kendrick. You probably haven't seen Kendrick. You haven't seen it on your research here, but take a look at it. And they asked me a couple of times about, about that process now also. Um, and so I think it's a, uh, you know, that certainly has become sort of a, a highlight of the downtown scene right now. Um, so uh, uh, youth center has been tabled. Uh, not tabled, but we've sort of, we're, we're sh it's very much still alive right now, uh, but we're changing course a little bit where it was my department that was, that was running the feasibility study. Now we're trying to do this cooperatively with a, with a bunch of different stakeholders in town. 
Um, and so I'll have an update on Youth Center at our next meeting. I've not, I, I'll have an update on where we are for the Youth Center at the next meeting in terms of spending that grant money and also in terms of the direction of where that's, where that's headed. There's a lot of energy from the town council. There's a lot of energy from, from uh, uh, several, several constituencies inside the town about, about sort of where, where uh, that youth center, what, what we're doing with the youth center. And so that's gonna basically uh, sort, of, sort of move a little bit in terms, of, in terms of what its focus is in the feasibility study. Um, uh, so uh, let me just say uh, before I open for any other questions, any new business or anything you want me to think about and, and put on the schedule for the next time for me to work on, you can always reach out to me between now and the next meeting to, to bring up any information, bring up any, any concerns that you have about uh, what we should be doing, where we should be going. I do want to say that as we move into, I, I basically moved past the halfway of the first year. I just looked at the calendar and said, it had, it's not six months, it's been here nine months now. Uh, and so I, I do want to have you all start to think about ways that, that uh, um, our, that, 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 that our commission can, can, uh, play a more active role, or can do can do anything with with our with our programming that that you feel would would make you all feel uh, uh, more useful, more involved. I I want to I want to make sure that I'm asking you all as I as I start looking at my my evaluation coming up towards the end of this year about what we're doing six months year year into the process. I want to make sure that you all have a chance to, uh, 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 you know, think about what it is that the commission can be doing, should be doing here, and share that with me in whatever venues you you feel uh, you feel comfortable. Um, uh, it, uh, when Sanjay mentioned earlier about you know it, it would be great if we as a as a as a uh, public commission we're able to make our voice heard. If there's something that I can do to facilitate that voice in particular, I think that's, I wanted to make sure that I was, I, I left on the table that I wanna do anything that, that I can or should be doing to elevate your voice as a commission here. Um, and if I haven't been doing that, I don't know, nobody's told me that, that I haven't been doing that, but if there's something that I can or should be doing more to elevate the voice of the commission, then please feel free to share that. Sarah. Um, will, will we be having a June meeting? And if we are, will you be telling us about the Independence Day? I mean, if it's more than we, the, the fireworks are already announced. I don't oh, know if there's, yes. more, if there's more to the July 4th. <laughs> um, but, but if we're meeting next month, we can hear about it. Uh, I will definitely have more for you next month. I, right now, I'm, I don't have any specific details for you. Uh, uh, Mickey Belly and Noah Kramer and my staff are the ones that are putting that together. And I actually have a meeting with them tomorrow, basically as a tell me what, tell me where we are with it, make sure that no surprises. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, you know, it seems like it's, it's moving along pretty well. Uh, we're, we are soliciting for the for the community contributions to that right now, but in terms of the schedule, in terms of the event itself, I will have that information for you. And as a matter of fact, I can even email that to you all before when it when it gets posted, when more information is posted online, and when we have a, a more than the bare bones as to what that event is, I can get that to you all. Let you know. Most of the questions we've had over the course of the last two weeks. Most of the questions we've had in the office have been around the aquatic schedule and around Independence Day. Uh, Independence Day, uh, most of those questions have been from the surrounding towns, have been from people from Amherst, from, I mean, from, from Hadley, people from Sunderland have been asking us about it. So that's one that's going outside of our, our wheelhouse here. I will get that information to you ASAP. Any 
uh, new business or closing comments? Matt. Um, any update on open commission positions? Um, yes, I spoke to town hall and they said that uh, I, I told them we, uh, I, I, my interest is in trying to fill those ASAP. We have four applicants in from, from, uh, from before. Their con town hall's concern is that the, the ratio isn't great to fill the committees. And so I'm, I'm gonna, I told them I'd spend a week trying to, trying to encourage to fill two spots, which we're trying to fill two spots right now. The empty position <laughs> and and i said and we're going to need a third what do you uh, mean ratio ratio the ratio right. of four applicants for for two or three spots oh you want a larger pool you want a larger pool okay. uh -huh. and so they said that their 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 general interest has always been to try and to try and be about four to one on those we may not get to four to one and i we had that conversation i said we may not we may not get to four to one in terms of filling those positions. I think one of those four, I have to talk to her because I saw a name I'm familiar with and she's a UMass student who lives in Longmeadow. And so she just graduated. So I don't know if she's even eligible anymore. I don't know if she may have just filled it out for, uh, for other purpose, for, for like, she probably filled it out in October, November or something. I don't know exactly if she's, if she's eligible or still interested or what have you, but we have four applicants for th for two or three positions. And so I said that I'd spend a week trying to beat the bushes a little bit and see if I can't drum up a little bit of uh, interest among some people that now I've had a chance to, to see and talk to some people in town. I think that I might have a couple of, of uh, possibilities, but we'll, we'll you know, I, I will, I'll turn the heat up on them and make sure that we're getting those positions filled, even if it just means coming from a smaller pool. Sarah? Can you invite people um, to apply like through whatever emails, you know, just have it like a signature line, you know? Oh. You know, in whatever. I, uh, uh, is your suggestion, let me see if I'm, if I'm hearing you right, that I could send to basically a, a uh, we have program information that I could send it out to people, basically do a, a all town mailing and say, if you're interested in recognition. And yeah, or if you're confirming signups or anything by email. I mean, yeah. I don't know if there are any rules about this, but you must, I mean, you have all these families I, I, involved, have, right? I would think some of the parents, some of the guardians might. Am I, am I not in the right line of work if I'm sitting here saying, I don't want to annoy people with mail. <laughs> I, I don't, <laughs> no, I, I don't want to. This is mail they get anyway. You I, put right. it, add it to the. Oh, model. I see. Uh, like I'm, I'm thinking sitting like, like it almost, it almost feels like I'm spamming people and saying, hey, I got a great opportunity for you here. <laughs> Existing, you send out a confirmation of something by, yes. you know, or, or just, the first meeting is, you know, whatever. You must be, in, I assume you're in communication with families pretty regularly. I'm gonna run that by town hall tomorrow. I'm gonna to run by town hall the, that as a possibility of trying to drum up some interest and okay. Carolyn. Uh, alternatively, could you put it on the website? Assuming that people are visiting that regularly, right? Right, um, I assume so. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if there are any rules towards towards uh, soliciting for a commission. Um, my only ca I'm cautious only because because this just feels like one of those things that that because I don't know anything. I didn't know until you all came into my life about what a commission does for people in my position. Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I just have to like live in Amherst. <laughs> exactly. That's, all. that's, that's the only rule for who can be on it. Um, we have after school, which I know I have a bunch of. I, I like I can, I can actually make it like a like a director's uh, just a quick director's thank you at the end of the school year for for people in after school, uh, and and mention to them thanks for the for the school year and any feedback. Uh, any feedback for how to do prime time a little bit better, and also if you are interested in 
in the, joining our rec commission, there are open positions and please let us know. We're encouraged. I can, I can basically ask parents there to. I, I would say that I don't know why we're at commission. There are a few boards that are commissions and they sound very, they sound a lot more important or something than a <laughs> So I don't know if the name is off putting or why we're a commission and why we're called commissioners instead of just committee people. It's might be in okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy uh, maroon, maroon top hats for everybody. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, uh, if, if they're looking for numbers, if they're looking for a deeper pool, then, then I will ask town hall what, uh, you know, is there any limit to how I build that pool? Is there any, is, are there any restrictions to how I, how I build a deeper pool there? Um, because if there aren't, then then soliciting through our through our uh, our our mail and registration would make sense. If there aren't those sorts of those sort of, if there are no restrictions, then then yeah, I, I'm sure that throwing it up on the website and and advertising it on our website would make sense. Um, That doesn't that doesn't feel like it has to be a conflict of of of, of my civic responsibilities or anything, but I don't want to find out on the fly. Matt. Yeah, I just have a point of clarification because I was typing and only half listening. So the the movie evenings at the pool. Who are you working on with that? With that? the the senior center. That was with the senior center. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, uh, and we started talking about that a little yeah, while ago. That's okay. I was just a little to, confused because then you mentioned Nikki Abelli. So I was like, Nikki, Oh, I'm sorry. Was it prime Abelli time is, or was it? Nikki Abelli is the one that is, that is uh, uh, putting together the movie. We have an inflatable yeah. movie screen that we're using there. Right, so right, she's right. going to, she's going to be our right. IT for the evening. Right. Cool. All right. That's it. Okay. So next meeting. Next meeting. Um, it sounds like Mondays are a are, are a necessity for us um, for a variety of reasons. I'm happy that Monday hasn't been Monday hasn't been a chore for people. Uh, I was told that people don't like Monday meetings, and I'm okay with them. Uh, it is now late May. It's the second to last Monday in May, so. I would say, uh, I would say, in terms of space for ourselves to get to mid June at least, as opposed to trying to do turn over right away. Um, July fourth is the is the one is the one sort of uh, uh, item of of sort of timing concern for us that we don't want to get too close to July 4th before the meeting, but I wouldn't have a problem if people asked for a later June meeting. Oh, it gives us the 20th and the 27th, and I'm not here on the 27th. That's I only the 13th. If you want to go that soon. Can we, can we look at 13th or 20th or 13th or 20th work better well, for anybody? The, the, 13th, the 13th is three weeks. The twentieth is four weeks. So three weeks. I think three weeks would be comfortable enough. I think three weeks would give us enough time away from this meeting, and it also brings us into the end of the school year. Yeah, I'm going to be in DC on the twentieth, um, mm -hmm. and I, I, six might be hard. Seven might might be okay. I'm not sure what our schedule is for that day. Oh, I thought we were looking at the 13th. Is that not the Can case? we do the 13th? Yeah, the 13th is the 13th is better for me. <clears throat> it's a little iffy shoot. for me, but I'd I'd go for it anyway. Let's shoot for the 13th. Um, that gives us enough space away from today and it's enough space before July 4th. Um, mm -hmm. so that we can we can uh, uh, Make some things happen if we need to. If there is does, any, does, 
Does six work better for people or seven? Oh, six o'clock. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Six o'clock works better for me. Uh, I'm not speaking for anybody else here, but six o'clock, six, six o'clock works better for me. Seven o'clock. I could definitely do seven o'clock if people want to do seven o'clock. I'd vote for seven. I mean, I can do either. I'd vote for seven. Later is seven easier is for fine. me. Seven o'clock yeah. is fine. Thank you. So then, uh, 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 let's, uh, oh, you want to do a motion? Motion for next meeting? I don't think we need a motion. Okay, sounds good. <clears throat> then let's set, let's, uh, set for our calendars Monday, June 13th, 7 o'clock p.m. Okay, good. Okay. And I will send agenda. I will send you all update on July 4th and... Uh, and if anybody has any updates or questions between now and then, let me know. All right. Excellent. Okay. Thanks Thank for you. being here tonight. Okay. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Have a good trip home. <laughs> <Yep>. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.